Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're going to look at the AGM-65 Maverick. The Maverick entered service in 1972 and is still in service today. It is used by over 30 countries. There are a number of variants of the Maverick, but the ones that interest us with the F4 are the A, B, D, and G models. The original A variant carried a 126 pound warhead and had optical guidance system. The B variant carried the same warhead but added an optical zoom feature to show targets farther off. The D model introduced an infrared seeker and the G is similar to the D except that it carries a 300 pound warhead. On the F4 only stations 2 and 8 can carry Mavericks. Stations 2 and 8 can carry 1, 2, or 3 Mavericks depending on the Maverick type. Models A, B, and D can be carried in one, two, or three configuration or on special weapons adapters with one Maverick and two AIM-9 Sidewinders. The AGM-65G can only be carried one per station. Before I jump into controls for the Maverick, I wanna talk about some special controls in the airplane for the Maverick. First is the forward hand control. The forward hand control is this little joystick located just beside the throttle on the left side of the cockpit. The forward hand control is used to slew the camera in the Maverick independent of the flight axis of the missile and the boresight of the plane. The forward hand control can either be controlled with an axis or with a series of buttons, more like a digital offset, where you can move it left, right, and back and forward. The other control for the Maverick is the target contrast switch. The target contrast switch is located just to the left of the forward hand control and has three positions. The normal position is in the middle and that is auto. The pilot can select between white on black or black on white to help the missile identify the target more easily. The settings are only useful for the AGM 65A and B models. The forward hand control in the F4 is controlled by the axis command weapon slew X and weapon slew Y. It can be mapped to an axis on your joystick. The other controls for the forward hand control are weapon slew down, left, right, and up, which can be mapped to push buttons on your joystick. Now some additional controls for the Maverick. The Maverick uses the air refuel release button, which defaults to S on the keyboard and should be mapped to a button on your HOTAS. The air refuel release button must be held down in order to slew the Maverick seeker head. Releasing the AAR button will cause the Maverick seeker head to attempt to lock whatever it is currently pointing at. The trigger is used to activate the Maverick seeker head. When the Maverick is installed and ready for flight, there is a cover placed on top of the seeker head. Pressing the trigger will remove the cover from the selected weapon. Additionally, the trigger is used to return the seeker head to bore sight if it has been moved with the forward hand controller. And finally, a second press on the trigger will cause the Maverick seeker head to toggle between narrow and wide fields of view. Once the Maverick is successfully locked onto a target to launch the Maverick, press the bomb button. To set up the Mavericks, change the fusing to nose tail, select the stations with Mavericks, turn on master arm, switch to direct, switch the weapon select to TV, and then change the, t the uh, radar screen to TV. Change the HUD mode to air to ground and set for 45 mils depression. It is important that after the weapon select is set to TV that you wait three minutes for the gyros in the Mavericks to warm up before enabling the Maverick with a trigger pull. Once you are approaching the target area and three minutes has elapsed, pull the trigger to activate the first Maverick Seeker Head. With 45 mils of depression, the Maverick Seeker Head is roughly lined up with the pipper. Once you are ready to aim at the target and have a stable approach, it's time to move the Maverick Seeker Head. I'm using active pause for this first demonstration because I want to zoom in tight on here to show the symbology. In order to move the Maverick Seeker Head, I need to press the AAR button. With that depressed, I can then start to move the Maverick Seeker Head with the controller. What I'm going to attempt to do is move the Maverick Seeker Head so that my target is in the center of the crosshairs and then release the AAR button. If a lock is achieved on this model Maverick, 
those blocks will move in to indicate that there is a lock. And now the Maverick Seeker head is stabilized to that target. If I lock onto the wrong thing, all I need to do is press the trigger and the Maverick will return to the bore site. Then I must push the AAR button again and move the target to regain my lock. Once I have a satisfactory lock, I can press the bomb button to fire the missile. When the missile fires, the screen will go black because the next missile and the next Maverick has not been set up. Pull the trigger once and that will activate the next seeker. And then it's the same thing. Turn on the AAR, press the AAR button, move the seeker head to the desired target and release the AAR button. In this case, I did not lock the target I was looking for, so I pressed the trigger. And again, AAR button, move the seeker head and release the AAR button, and now I have a lock. Once I have a satisfactory lock, bomb release button. Now, let's look at a different Maverick. In the previous demonstration, I showed the B model. This is the A model Maverick. The A model Maverick is very similar to the B model, except it has a wider field of view, which essentially means you have to get closer into your target in order to see smaller objects. Press the AAR button and move the sight with the forward hand controller. To achieve a lock, put the target in the center and release the AAR button. For the A model, a lock is identified when the crosshairs close on the target. And similar to before, press the bomb button to launch the weapon. To enable the next weapon, press the trigger and then repeat with the AAR button one thing to note while we're on this display is sometimes the picture can be improved with the contrast and brightness buttons. The contrast is changed with the outer controller of these two, the leftmost one, and the right one uses the inner controller. And by changing the contrast, it can help pull out targets from background clutter. The D model of the Maverick includes two significant changes from the A and B. First of all, the seeker is an infrared type seeker, and the other is it has two fields of view, wide and narrow. Once the seeker is activated with a trigger pull, the field of view can be changed with another trigger pull. It will default to wide. Squeezing the trigger once will go to narrow. Squeezing it again will go back to wide. The trigger is also used to reset the position of the seeker. So if the AAR button is pressed and the seeker is moved, when the AAR button is released and the trigger pressed again, it will go back to the uh, bore site. After it is returned to bore site, further squeezing on the trigger will toggle between wide and narrow views. Operation of the Maverick D in this case is the same as with the A and B models. Press AAR, Move till you find your target, release AAR, and then press the bomb release button. Press the trigger to select the next missile, and then release or repeat the process to find the next target. And once that target is found, lock and fire. The AGM-65G is very similar to the D model. The main difference is that it has a larger warhead of 300 pounds. Once the seeker has been activated with the trigger pull, further trigger pulls will toggle the field of view between wide and narrow. To move the seeker, press the AAR button and then use the forward hand controller to locate the target and center the target, then release the AAR button to lock onto that target. Once it is locked, a trigger pull will pull the seeker head back to bore sight, and then it will be necessary to hold down the AAR button again and maneuver it over the target. To fire the weapon, press the bomb release button. 